Hey everybody, and welcome to another edition of Mr. Z on TV. Today we're going to be talking about diagramming forces. Now, we diagram forces because forces are what we call vector quantities. That means they have an amount, and we would use a, uh, a vector or an arrow to diagram them. Now, when I was a kid, there was a famous guy by the name of Evil Kid Evil, who you see here. That's a, a heck of a first name. But uh, he was a stunt uh, daredevil, stunt guy, and he used to jump over stuff on his motorcycle, and he did it all the time. That's kind of what made him famous. So I'll be using a couple pictures uh, from Evil Knievel to give you some examples that you can use, um, hopefully, to study and maybe to do your homework. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here we see some of the basics. Uh, one of the things that I always tell students to try to remember is that when you're diagramming forces, that you need to think about the ARF, the agent, the receiver, and then the forces or vectors involved. So an agent is the thing that is exerting the push or pull. So for gravity, the agent would be the core of the earth. The receiver is the thing that it's pushing or pulling on. So then we can think about the effect that that force is going to have. And so then we can draw the vectors... And the vectors are just arrows, as you can see here. And the length of the arrow is going to be all about the, uh, the strength or magnitude, amount, of the force. And then the direction of the arrow tells us where it's going. So, for example, the one that's drawn here might be 20 newtons. But if I swung around, another arrow going, say, this way. And let me move that guy. We could actually subtract them from each other. Now, this one is not quite half. So let me pull that down, and let's say that this one, because it's not quite half a 20, let's say that this one happens to be 8, and I'm just going to write it this way, and done. So 8 newtons, put that one right up there. So that means that my net force, now net is a word that means after we've taken all the forces into consideration. So let's say we have one force going one way that's 20 newtons, and one going the other way that's 8. Since they're opposites, you'd do just like you would in math. You'd subtract them. So 20 minus 8 would be a, a 12 Newton force, and I can draw it. A 12 Newton force going this way, and I could actually line them right up. And so that this would be our resultant force. I'll tap this guy in here, and we'll just label them. And... So I could take this guy and move him right up there. So we have a, a net force of 12 newtons. So by the time we take this guy right here, which is our 20 newton force, and let's say there's a res uh, frictional force or something working against it, means that when we're all said and done, this 20 subtract the 8, we really only have a net force of 12 newtons. So that's kind of what we're going to add to some pictures and look at those diagrams. Okay, so here's a famous picture of Evil Knievel jumping over a bunch of, uh, I think those might be fire trucks or Coca-Cola trucks. You can see Coke Zero trucks or whatever here, and I don't know how many of them there actually are in this particular jump. But uh, So he's flying through the air. That means that there are several forces involved. Right where he's at, you can actually see right here is pretty close to the ramp that he's going to land on. I think that's what that stage is for. So let's diagram some of the forces. I'm going to grab an arrow. And the first force, which is kind of a major one, is he has a gravitational force. Let me move that over. And gravity is always the same as far as how it impacts things. So let's say that's the first one. And that one we can label. And I'm just going to label it with a capital G for gravity. All right? There it is. I'll slap it right there. But he also has a couple other forces. Since he's not currently falling, that must mean that he has another force involved going this way. And if he's maintaining his current height, then these two forces, if I line them up, I don't know how good I did. Yeah, pretty good. These two forces actually have to be equal, and we can call this one. I'm just going to give this one a, a capital L because lift is the force that we talk about with airplanes staying off the ground. So those would be the two basic forces that we would think about, and in this case, he stays about the same height because gravity and lift have canceled each other out, so our net force is zero. 
But he's also moving forward. So since he's moving forward, and we'll grab a different color, then that means he has a, a horizontal component to his force. And this one's actually quite large. So this one, I can't really put it where it needs to go, so I'll put it behind him. And this one is his forward speed. Okay, so his the forward thrust of the engine. And I don't know what else to call it, so we'll call it that. Slap it up in the arrow. That's going that way. Now, do you think there's any forces that are resisting him as he jumps over these coke trucks? Well, obviously, he has to overcome gravity, and that was this one right here, that lift force that he got as he came off the jump like this. So he's overcoming gravity with that, but he's also moving forward. And as he goes through the air, he's probably slowing down. Well, this one is quite small, and there's a reason it's quite small, and that's because if it were real big, he would stop. So this one we're going to drag in the other direction. Let me flop that guy around. And this guy is our air resistance. Okay, so air resistance. And I'll just label this guy AR. And air resistance is that way. It opposes this forward motion, but it's not quite strong enough to stop it, which is a good thing for Evil Knievel because he wouldn't want to crash onto a Coke truck. So what happens as he begins to fall is that this lift arrow... This, let me grab it. No, the lift arrow that we have right here starts to actually get shorter, and the gravity arrow always stays the same. But if this lift arrow gets shorter, it's not balancing gravity, which means he's going to start to fall. And that's what he wants to happen. In the beginning, his lift arrow was greater than gravity, which is why he went up in the air. And now, as he comes back down, it's going to be less than gravity. So at this particular point in time, they're balanced because he's not falling, but he is moving forward and air resistance is slowing him down just a little. This is just one example of how we might diagram all of the forces involved in a picture to come up with a net force in two directions. And those two directions might be uh, something like the horizontal. So we might, there are a couple things that we want to look at here is if we pop this in here, we have vertical which is up and down, and we have horizontal. Now those two actually combined with one another, you pop that there, to, to end up with a resultant or net force vector. Let me grab my arrow tool here real quick. And we actually are going to get something like, let me use a rainbow here. We're actually going to get something like this. Okay, that's in the beginning because the forward component is big and the lift component is big. Those two arrows, this guy and this guy, actually will combine to give him an upward motion. But in the end of his flight through the air, we end up with more of a motion like this because his downward force gravity isn't balanced by lift and he's still got forward motion so the yellow one and the red one combine you can kind of see those combining to make him come back down so all throughout the flight his uh what would you call it his vectors sorry are changing to represent his current motion okay so at any given time these arrows could be different lengths depending on what's happening and you can check this out if you go to explorelearning.com. You can check out the golf range gizmo and turn the vectors on. And you'll see as the ball flies through the air, the vectors change, the vertical and the horizontal components, to show you what's really going on with things like velocity, force, and acceleration. Vectors are what it's all about. Vectors are arrows. Vectors have strength or magnitude, which is an amount, and they have direction. And we're going to use them all the time in diagramming forces. Okay, last one. Here's a picture of a little guy pushing a Tonka truck in the snow. So, since we can assume that the truck is moving forward, we know that there must be a directional component going this way. That would be force pushing 
from this little guy right here. He's pushing forward. Uh, so the truck moves. Now, do you think there's any friction there? Of course there is. It's going to be friction down here uh, between the truck and the snow, more so if the, than if the snow wasn't there. So it actually has a pretty good size frictional component, but not quite enough to overcome the pushing force, which is why we see the tracks in the snow and it moves forward. A couple other ones we could slap down here, and I'll change the color just to make them a little bit more interesting, is that we certainly have, nope, that is not what I wanted to do. We certainly have the main force that exists all the time on the Earth, and that is, yep, gravity. So we have gravity pulling down, and in this case, gravity is actually balanced by the, uh, the force of the Earth, you might think that's kind of a weird statement. Well, I'll try to draw those the same length. Gravity must be balanced by the Earth, because if it wasn't, then the Tonka truck would be slamming right through the Earth's crust and headed down, uh, not towards China, but uh, towards the core of the Earth. So, here we have this little guy is pushing forward. There's a little bit of friction. Let me line those up. And so our resultant force, if we measured those, would be from this little point right here all the way back to there. So let's say our main pushing force is 30 newtons. This is about a third, maybe a little bit more than that. Call it 13. So maybe we have 17 newtons left over of his force that was not taken over by this gravitation or frictional force down here gravity is balanced by the push of the earth back up and so the truck stays on the ground but it moves forward kind of slow so that's diagramming forces we would label these and um and think about him as the agent he exerts the force the tonka truck is the receiver it receives the force and the effect of the net force is that we get movement to the right Okay, so this is diagramming forces. Well, next time we'll look at calculating the forces using some specifics, but that's a brief lesson in vectors, diagramming forces. And uh, cool, hopefully you learned something and check back Mr. Z on TV. Later.